What's happening guys? Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. I am in the upcoming Lockhart's Pomade Retail Space. I'm here with Steve and Nicole Lockhart. This is part two of Behind the Brew. If you haven't yet checked out part one, it'll be up at the top. And I highly suggest you do that because we brewed up some awesome stuff. So here in part two, we are gonna be answering your questions. We posted them on Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, all over the place, and we are gonna get some good answers. Let's do it. So the first question we got here, when are you gonna make a high hold matte clay full time? So that's something that we, we have been working on actually. Um, we've got a few different products for high holding matte products, not necessarily clay products. Um, we've got one that's in the works in the moment. We, we've sent out a few testers and the other one that's been in the works for a year and a half now, anti-gravity. So that's, we, we're actually, we're, we're this close with that formula. It's one of those formulas that we've gone back and forth and back and forth. We haven't been able to get it entirely perfect and it's one that we're, we're just taking our time on. Next question, I don't know if it's Facebook or Instagram, but What's new and cooking in the Lockhart's lab? We just talked a little bit about some upcoming style of anti-gravity. With the opening of your retail space, you guys are venturing into a whole bunch of new kind of categories yes. with grooming. So what other stuff are you guys bringing out? The new space, it's actually gonna be like a full-scale apothecary, right? So we're gonna be hand making, uh, there's, gonna be, there's gonna be soaps, there's gonna be uh, creams, lotions, products for, for not, not just specifically for men. A lot of them are still gonna be geared for men, you know, cause that's, that's what we specialize in. Right. But I mean, we're, we're venturing into not just more hair products. So we've got some, some different sprays that we're working on. We've got um, different fragrances that we're working on. Uh, anything you wanna add? No. When we order from Lockhart's, we actually deal with you, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of the times. So yeah. those of you that don't know, this is who fills your orders. She's the boss. Actually, Morgan is the one that fills the orders. Oh, Morgan's behind the camera. You Come say hi, Morgan. Morgan's the my cute baby sister that can do no wrong in this entire world. <laughs> you know, ordering from a company like this is really no different than going to like a mom and pop shop, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. or a family owned restaurant or, or something of that nature. Yeah. You guys get to know some of the people that order from you, right? Oh, yeah. Especially when you have groups like EP, if, you're, if you guys are on everything Pomade on Facebook. Which you if you're are, not, you should join. Yeah, you, uh, are you an admin on there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was actually um, Nicole, essentially Nicole um, and a couple other guys were, were the ones that started the group. Um, they had me become the admin because Nicole didn't want to deal with it. But we, we actually, we were, essentially we, we formed the group. Yeah. yeah, we get a lot of customers from everything Pomade. Mm -hmm and a lot of customers that I recognize from Instagram that we kind of speak with regularly, but actually a lot of our business is people that I just don't know. Um, this one's for Nicole. Uh, what is the greatest thrash metal band of all time? The answer is f***ing Slayer. Whoa. But I guess the, the video edited version <laughs> is Slayer. On Sirius XM, there is a channel Jose called Mangan. Liquid Metal. Yeah. And Jose Mangan is the host like 90% of the time. And if it's, I don't know if he has like a select time spot, but they even rerun all of his shows all the time. And he has like hours long of time that he is on there DJing. Mm -hmm. And he does not say Slayer, he says fucking Slayer. And if he says Slayer, he corrects himself later on down the road. <laughs> it's hilarious. Next question is, okay, that's pretty interesting. Um, fifth sample, uh, you're one fifth of the fifth? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, five group, I guess. I did not know that that's why it was called that. There you go. It really should be the sixth because she's involved as well. But. Uh, well, I've heard you guys as one, one body. One unit. All right. Yeah. All right, Ben and Joe, we'll, as a, we'll, as a whole. we'll accept that. My name is on the, <laughs> that's true. the jar, yeah. I think. You got, yeah, I believe you guys are on the jar. That's true. Steve and Nicole. This fifth sample came out really well. I enjoyed it. A lot of people on my channel enjoy it. What was your guys' experience working on that? Was it, was it pretty fun? Was it, it, cool? it was a whole lot of fun, really. It was super fun because we actually got to meet Joe and Ben. Yeah, a couple I saw of that times on actually. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, we got to hang out, play ping pong at their Airbnb place, which was hilarious because I learned that I was really bad at it. <laughs> and, uh, and Ben and Joe are really good. Yeah, well, yeah. they had been practicing. Yeah, it was very competitive. So it, it was a fun night, though. It wasn't fair. That sounds awesome. No, it was a whole lot of fun just working with those guys. They're cool dudes. Um, and the product's great. I mean, we, we worked on that for well over a year. It was almost a, a year and a half. And um, Clayton of O'Dowd's. He actually, he, he started the formulation process and um, I, I think he put together a, a great product. And then it was kind of, since Clayton makes 
different types of products than we make. And I know Blue Mountain was trying to bring in the like the entire pomming community that may and, and try to make something completely unique. Right. And so me and Clayton, we we were kind of uh, there's a lot of input on both of our parts for for developing the product, and then they kind of handed it off when when they brought it into the lab. Since we we have had experience going from you know homebrewed product and then bringing it up in scale. So that's that's a really difficult part when when you're taking a homemade product and bringing it to scale. That's not as easy as many would think. You don't just multiply things by, you know, a thousand and then you get a thousand units. It doesn't work that way. So we were we were involved in kind of that handoff and dealing with right. the lab for quite a while. Because you guys have experience with that with your Matt Clay and some of your is it professional line, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. So that's awesome. What is next? I think we got a question from Brandon Rock River here. So you can go ahead and answer this one. The question is, when can we work together? Yes. And, and then, then he asked, "How does <laughs> how does June work for you?" Yes. Fantastic. Two yeses. Also, what do you like on your pizza? Yes. Everything. No, my actually my favorite pizza is Little Caesars Hot Runnies. Very simple. That's gonna be a better answer than what mine is because Michigan made, pro probably Michigan made. I saw a lot of Little Caesars trucks on the way up here. Mm -hmm. Thirteen hour drive. In case anyone wanted to know. I think we need to know what you like on pizza. Uh, I okay. My first ever pizza I got when I was little was where I was living in Vancouver, Washington, and it was pineapple and black olive. Let's pause for uh, let's, uh, let's moment yeah, of let's, silence. Let me swallow this <laughs> moment vomit of that's silence sitting for in my all mouth right real now. pizza lovers. <laughs> yes, pineapple and black olive was the first pizza I ever got, and it stuck with me up until. My wife, who's behind the camera today, she drove the trip with me. We ordered pizza on Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I got. We oh. ate pizza on Thursday, too. We got, got a little Caesar's hot ready. Yeah, we oh, got we, good pizza. We ordered Pop, Papa John's. You guys got Papa John's up here, right? He's pretty much uh, everywhere. Not There's really, not, not near us. Up here. We did he's go right. down to... He's rich. We did hang out with the Bomb City Royals from Ohio. Shout out to the Bomb City Royals. In a recording studio. What recording studio was it? Oh god, I don't remember uh, recording. Yes. Rest Belt Recording yes. Studio, and we got Pop That's John's right. for the first time, and it was super good. With the explosion of the homebrew market, salon market, unorthodox water-based clays, etc., do you anticipate there to be a ceiling to the diversity of pomade products? And if not, where do you see the pomade market going? That's an important question, especially because there That's seems great. to be a lot of brewers popping up now. And that's the thing we've, we've noticed for, you know, ever since we've been doing this, you know, we started in early 2013 is when we started. And since then, we've seen so many people coming and going. And the, the, the good thing and the bad thing about the pomade market is that there is kind of a, it's easy to get into the market. It, do, it doesn't cost, it does cost some money, but I mean, people can start up for, you know, put a hundred bucks in. They're not going to make anything good, but they can do that. Right. You know, and you'll see people that like, I've got a cool label design. I need to. I need. I need tins that I can put this stuff on. Oh, and I should probably make a product that goes in it too. There's been a lot of that over the the past four years, um, but usually those guys come and go, and they usually they're just a blip on the radar. Radar, but the ones that make good product, they stick around for a while. Speaking about unorthodox water base, I think we talked a little bit about that. You guys don't have any much interest in pursuing that right now. No. You guys are kind of looking at your other options, uh, like you talked about the there's, creams and yeah, bath there's and just body type stuff. Other products that we're excited to work on. Um, unorthodox water base has just never really worked for me, mm -hmm. um, except for the fifth sample. The fifth, because like I said, the fifth sample was so much different because there was eh, there was so much input from so many different angles. Right. We created something that was totally unique. But unorthodox water base has just never really worked in my hair. And there's also at the scale that we're you know we're supplying our distributors and our retailers at this point, there's just too many inconsistencies that can come with it. And I, I definitely you know I would never want to you know, hurt any anybody else's business by creating a product that's subpar and it's going to end up, you know, costing them money in the long run. Yeah, because there's already other companies that do it really well, like Clayton and Zach. Mm -hmm. And there's really no point in us Dave, coming out with a new Wade. product, Wade, if we can't do it better. And I don't think Brandon. we can. Yeah. And I think we've always been a company that doesn't really follow the, the trend in your face trend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just to stay true to our brand, we don't want to start doing that now. And regarding like where the market's going, um, I think you're going to see a lot of a lot of the established brewers. I think you're going to see them kind of diversifying their line a lot more than what what it currently is. I think you're well, going to. Well, Clayton's already started. Yeah, Clayton's already been. He's he's got a very diverse line. He's got all kinds of products, and he makes he makes great stuff. But I think you're going to be seeing them venturing, kind of like what I said we're going to be doing. We're going to be moving into more skincare. 
um, they're going to be moving. I think they're going to be moving into different, just different markets altogether. And I think another thing that we talked about too when we were in the car yesterday was you're going to see a definite differentiation between crafters and. Oh yeah, so there's going to be between like hobbyists. So there, there's going to be a, there's going to, you're going to differ, differentiate between who's the hobbyist and who's the craftsman. So there's going to be the guys, like I said, there's always going to be the people that are going to come in and they're going to be like, look, I got a cool label. I need to slap something in this. Those yeah. are the hobbyists. And then there's going to be the craftsmen that take their time and develop fantastic products. And there's, there's numerous in the market right now. Uh, the next one, any unexpected challenges as you've increased the scale of your business? How do you find a balance between your personal relationship and your business? And specifically, Steve, how great is it to work with your wife? This yeah. could go really good or really bad. I could be sleeping on the couch for the rest of my life at this point. <laughs> we'll take the easy ones first. Regarding the, the unexpected challenges that we've seen, um, just as we've grown, there's been, uh, online, there's a lot of different, like I said, shenanigans going on that you can that, that you run into, and there's a lot of uh, fraudulent charges. And that's, a, that's another warning that I would issue for anybody trying to get into, you know, making any sort of products and selling them online. You're, you, you have to be really strict and you have to pay attention to the orders that are coming through. And, you know, originally when we started, you know, we weren't aware of that. You know, I never sold stuff online before and we, we've ran into, you know, there's been, I'd say thousands of dollars worth of product that's been stolen by, by people that are using fraudulent credit cards. We try to screen as many as we possibly can, but I mean, with, with the amount of volume that we do, it's hard to keep track of all of it. And how do you guys find out that the credit card's stolen then? Does it just get reported to you later? No, there are a few ways that you can look at it to begin with. Um, we have a banking system that we use that money that doesn't come from PayPal gets filtered through. Mm -hmm. And you can look at a portion of the credit card information that comes through. Obviously we don't have access to the all of that information, mm -hmm. um, but there are like security checks and some of the security checks will come up as unverified. Mm -hmm. And normally when that happens, it usually means that it's fraudulent. It's so um, you can see the country that the credit card is originating. Yeah, originates in. And say the, the order is coming from Indonesia, but the credit card is a US credit card. That's a really big red flag. Right. Okay. I mean, that, that's another hotbed. You know, there are some certain countries are more. Southeast more Asia, basically. So you guys yeah, but the thing is, the, the people in Southeast Asia, like, we. We have great relationships with a lot of them. You know, we love the people in, in Southeast Asia. We're, we've been working there ever since we started. But it's it's a kind of a relatively new thing that I'm aware of. Um, but there's a lot there's like hotbeds and some activity that's going on there that needs to be addressed. And and there's there's actually a lot of guys. Um, there are there's actually an Indonesian pomade community as well. Um, and there's a lot of really cool guys in that group that have been uh, very helpful for a lot of brewers um, in tracking down the people that are stealing you know stealing product from them. They're essentially yeah, one they're stealing time product. There were a few people in the Indonesian pomade enthusiast group that literally tracked down one, of these, people down one of these kids. They like called his dad. His dad made him apologize. It was like a whole big thing, yeah, and it was it's hilarious. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty crazy. It's it's cool though. Good you know, here in Indonesian the pomade enthusiasts. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Good dudes. A, that group is a awesome. pomade bounty hunters. That's uh -huh. right. <laughs> um, so what's the next question? Finding balance between your personal and business. We don't. We don't. Sometimes no. you go home crying. <laughs> you go home crying. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, that was that's true. Over so the over Christmas Caesars comes in. The pot and readies come in. On the yeah, we need we, a lot of pot and readies. We did not cook at home when we were brewing from home. Yeah, got to keep a clean workstation though, and uh, really working from home for so long, man. That our biggest expense became food because we weren't eating where we were working. You know, we we wanted to keep that area clean. And yeah. and the last question was the hard one, wasn't it? How great is it to work with your wife? Fantastic. Liar. Every single day, I, I cherish every single moment that I get to spend with her. He's lying. You played that off nicely, That's I it. think. And the Oscar goes too. <laughs> How did you and Steve meet and what made you both want to start making pomade? Ooh. Okay, Steve and I have known each other for almost our whole lives. Mm. We went to the same school together. Small town. All the way through elementary school even. And We grew up two blocks away from each other. We did. We did not talk when we were in school. We had she was a great ahead of me. She's we, the old lady. We had band together, and I think that was probably the most interaction that we ever had. Um, but we did not have even like an acquaintanceship in high school until after you graduated. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah, the way that we, we, we knew each other forever, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the one we actually like finally met. So I was in a band, right? A, a, you know, just a, like a garage really band. Really bad 
really bad. Rude. Wrong. Rude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> frankly. So yeah, I was in a, it was a, you know, like a, like a thrashy metal kind of uh, garage, yeah. garage band mm -hmm. from high, back in high school. And so she was kind of on and off seeing the guitarist, right? Not really. Um, so she would come, but she was also, her best friend was dating the singer. And so she would come to all of our practices, all of our like jam sessions and stuff. And some of our shows, I think. And that's kind of how we met. And then I broke up with my girlfriend from high school who I had been with for a very long time. I was his rebound. And she was my rebound. <laughs> oh. Well, no, so it was, yeah, it was like two months after we'd broken up. And I mean, no, I mean, I'd talk, I mean, I'd, I'd talk to other girls. But yeah, so we started dating um, right after, yeah, right after high school. It would have been you, after I was on You high officially school. asked me out the day after Sweetest Day, and then I ditched you. And then she ditched me. I asked her, I, yeah, I asked her if she wanted to actually be my girlfriend. And her girlfriend rolled up outside right as I asked that question, and she left with her and made me walk home. It was awesome. Next time on Pomade Family Therapy. <laughs> What made us want to start making pomade was actually, I was originally, I was working in the shop at the, at the dealership that I worked with, worked at for the longest time. I worked there for seven, eight years and I'd been working in the shop for four and I'd finally gotten into the sales position. So I'd gotten into a position that I had to look a little bit more presentable, even though I guess you, that's kind of debatable for car salesmen, <laughs> but I wanted to be more presentable and not be like that sleazy car salesman. And then I, then I grew a funny mustache and slicked my hair back with grease. But so I figured, I need something that's gonna work for my hair and I couldn't find anything that worked for my hair. So I grabbed up her, her pots and uh, spoons and all of her kitchen utensils and I started just mixing ingredients, mixing ingredients and doing research on, you know, what oil does what and that's how it all started. And I didn't want to. You didn't, you didn't I forced her into it. No. I totally forced her into it. I dragged her into it. So I was still working full time and I told her, I think there's orders that have to be filled. Someone's gotta fill them. And I was up every single night. I was up till 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning, you know, at the time when we started. And finally, like, we both had enough of that and she started taking care of that stuff. And I, I didn't have to deal with it as much. And No, there was a portion of time where I did everything. It was a little selfish though, because when he would get home, he would have to brew and package orders. And that period of time was, I mean, shortly after we had really gotten settled in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you after your honeymoon stage of being married, you, you hit that wall where it's real life now and you have to like each other all the time <laughs> and live with each other <laughs> and we didn't get to spend a whole lot of time together to begin with so if i wanted to spend any time with him i had to make sure that all of that stuff was done before he got home from work she's i mean she's been the most valuable player for us for the entire time that we've been doing this ever since she jumped in and started helping us out she's been like she's been the backbone of the company i don't even know where to go from there <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when did you get to a point where you knew it was time to leave your full-time jobs to focus on the company? Good question. And that what were the question. struggles you faced during that transition? Yeah, that's a big step. Like you're question. taking the plunge. Yeah. So from the there, job, there really were lots the of sales struggles. job into investing in yourself. Yes. Originally, you know, I was working at, at a, a car dealership. It had gotten to the point where I was just I was working more on our business than I was. I was busier busier at home than I was in the shop and or, or at the, the the car lot right and um you know i'd be up till one o'clock two o'clock in the morning every single night and it just got to the point where i couldn't do that anymore you know i wasn't getting any sleep because there was so much business to be had at home and, and i just couldn't justify working a day job and then having to come home and this be it was like having two full-time jobs you know even though she was at home she was you know taking fill, filling orders and all that stuff she also couldn't handle the load by herself, so I'd have to come home and I'd have to get everything made and I'd stay up all night every night. So it was, it was a pretty easy decision to just say, it's time, I gotta go, I gotta take this on full time. Well, and then during that period of time, my mom got diagnosed with cancer. Oh man. And I was helping take care of her. And it was, there was a lot. There was just a lot going on behind the scenes that we didn't really talk about at the time, just for the simple fact that we're, I mean, we're pretty private, not that we weren't, trying to hide it from anybody, but we right. definitely didn't want to use that as an excuse as to why we weren't producing or getting anything out that we needed to. We really just tried to power through it. And, and we did. I mean, that was, the, you, you, they ask about struggles. I mean, that was our biggest struggle was her mom's illness. And I mean, that was, uh, she was diagnosed before I quit the dealership, mm. you know? Um, so when I came home, it was, when I started working from home, it was a, a lot of times, you know, she'd have to go and help out with her mom with something or take care of her mother and you know I'd be having to go crazy at home so I mean there was just a lot of time juggling going on you know and we wanted to spend as much time with her as we could and well there were periods of time where I was living with her and I wasn't staying at home right 
So, I mean, and my dad died in that period of time, too. Oh, so man. there was, it was so just, here. it was one thing after another that we were just consistently having to fight through. And there were definitely times where we thought, like, we might not make it through this. And the, it was it was really the personal challenges that were the, the most difficult. But we've got, I mean, we've got fantastic retailers, fantastic distributors that we've been working with that we have great relationships with. And, and, and really, they've, I mean, they were... They were super supportive when all that that stuff was going on, and I mean, they kept us, you know, they kept us excited about what we were doing, and they, you know, they kept us. They were they were understanding when it was going to be a little bit longer. They got it, you know. And if it wasn't, you know, for them being the way, you know, being so supportive of us, it, it would have been a whole lot more difficult. That's for sure. Well, and then during that period of time, Morgan was living with somebody else too, and that was always a really big struggle for me personally. And then this last year, uh, she decided that she wanted to come and live with us. And so that Join was the craziness. That Join was the craziness. it was really big, but we're really really happy about it. And now she's she fits in with us so well. That's it's awesome. like and she's a very hard worker too. So she she started working for us um, earlier this Christmas early, break. Christmas Christmas break, yeah. yeah. So she I mean when we were working from home, you know, she was just doing doing a lot of the packaging and labeling and you know helping us out helping around Nina. There. helping Nina. Yes, we miss you, Nina. We love you. Uh, and. Um, but yeah, so she's she's been a very hard worker. Blood, sweat, and tears into this label. Absolutely. On this brand, I should say. Man, that's a lot. A lot of tears. <laughs> a lot of tears. Yeah, plenty of those. A lot of pizza boxes. <laughs> Blood, sweat, and tears in pizza boxes. Yes. Uh, a lot of McDonald's, actually. Yeah. McDonald's. I can we don't condone We don't condone an unhealthy lifestyle. We just kind of were forced into it for a little while. Yeah, me and Morgan, How actually, we started... We started working out at the end of December, and we kind of stopped working out at the beginning of February. So we need to get back into it. Yeah, when they first started, let me just add this. When they first started, and it was January, they're like, all these posers are going to be at the gym, and they're going to be <laughs> like, no, you guys oh, are the this, trash is my, talkers. this is my New Year's <laughs> no. resolution, and we're not going to be like that. I bet you after two weeks, nobody's even going to be at the gym. Guess who wasn't at the gym after two weeks? I These kept, two fools. I kept going for quite a while. She stopped way before I stopped. And I need to get I need to get back in because this thing is starting to jiggle a whole lot more than it should be. Wow. We eat a lot better now that we eat at home. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We eat a lot more now that we eat at home. I will How's admit you? that I have a, a particular habit for Great Mountain Dew Ooh. that Brad and Rodriguez will uh, tell. Let, yeah, we talked about this when I met with him. Uncle Chauncey. Uncle Chauncey. Yeah. Shout, Shout out, out to Uncle Chauncey. To Brandon Rodriguez for being such a weirdo, and we love it. Yeah, we love you, man. When I was out there visiting with him and Rock River, I hadn't had one for a while, and I was complaining about it. And he found the one gas station in the area that sells it and brought it to me. <laughs> Dude, I've never had anything like that. We're going to jump over to Reddit here in a second, because I'm loving those guys in the Reddit Pomade group, because they've been talking with me a lot. I actually joined that like two months ago. I finally got myself a Reddit account, and it, that's, that's a whole lot of fun, man. I don't understand Reddit. Yeah, I, just throwing that there's out. There's some pretty dark corners to Reddit, but the pomade groups. Yeah, the fantastic. pomade group is actually pretty cool. I've talked with a couple of you guys in there, so you guys are awesome. Yeah. Shout out to the pomade Reddit group. But before we jump over there, Dennis Vincent Rivera on uh, EP, any future collab products? I do have a collab in the works right now. Tell us more. With uh, Wade from Flagship Pomade Company. Me and him are working on a product, and it's coming soon. That's all I'm allowed to say right now. To answer that question, yes, I'm coming out with a new pomade with Flagship, and it will be out soon. And Wade, don't think that your hard work has gone unnoticed by everybody, because we seriously look up to you. You're doing amazing. Let's jump on over to Reddit. So I posted this little behind the brew question request on Reddit, and the awesome people responded. Why is Goon Grease Green? Because it can't, it can't be any other not? color. Yeah. It's well, gotta it be, be green. Red. What color would it be? If it was white, no one would want it. White would be dumb. Um, the most important reason, because we are a Spartan family. No, we're not. Yes, we are. <laughs> no, we're really Go green. Not. You know, it's March Madness right now. They just won. They, they, they beat some. I'm pretty sure Michigan just won the Big Ten Championship, so suck it. Get out Look here. what you just caused. Yeah, Whatever you, yeah this house is very divided. Fat plat. Well, when you live in Michigan, you're either a Michigan fan or you're a Michigan State fan. You're That's a Michigan just... State fan or you're a terrorist. Maybe we should move on. This one gets heated. Let's go on. <laughs> Continuing on the Goon Grease path, 
water-based goon grease. Did we already discuss this? Oh, no, no. We haven't. Yeah. That one's been that one's been in development for a very long time. I think we're closing in on a year with that one too. We've been developing a lot of products for quite a while. Yeah, I think I've done two testers on that one for you guys. Yeah. Me so too. at this point, um, I think maybe we did touch on this earlier. So we're, we're going to be launching um, to the street team, ju just for the street team. So you got to sign up to get into the street team in the street store. Um, it's password protected, but we're going to do like a, a soft launch, um, two ounce tins, small tins. Uh, for a, a greatly discounted rate just so that people can help us test it a little bit further. We want to make sure the product's completely, you know, as perfect as it possibly can be. Nothing is perfect, but you know, we want to make sure the product stays true to, you know, what Goon Grease is. And that's, you know, high shine, strong hold, um, easy to apply, all that good stuff. So that's, uh, it's close. We actually, we just went into um, production with it. So we should have, hopefully, probably early next month. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll at least have the, the final test. It's going to be like a test round, a final test round available. And it's just going to be 110s available. Um, and for the street team. Yeah, yep. early next month. For the street team. And then once once those are gone, once we get all the feedback on those products, we're going to take that feedback back, you know, consolidate it and figure out, you know, okay, so we got to do this, this, and this, and then we're going to launch the full product. Okay. Well, that was your answer. Early next month. If you're not a part of the street team yet, a link to the website where you can sign up, right, from the regular website, yep, yep. will be in the description down below. What was the first tin you ever sold? Um, the first tin that we ever sold, and I'll, I, if anybody follows us back to our early days, they'll remember we we weren't Lockhart's when we started. That wasn't our brand. That wasn't our name. Um, it was Lion Tamer. That was the first product we released, and it was kind of you know just like a fun little little product that we did, and that's that's where we kind of steamrolled from there. Um, there were only 24. There's only 24 in circulation, so if you can find one. Somebody send me one. That'd be cool. I don't have any. But the f very first one that was sold was on May 16th, 2013. The reason I remember that date is because it's my mom's birthday. So it's easy to remember every product that, you know, it's easy to remember our first sale anniversary. We have one more Reddit question that was a very, very special question. So I'm going to save that for the last one from Prize Fighter Products. But first, I think we missed one on, on Facebook. Um, which product would you say took the longest to develop? And which product would you say from start to launch maybe took the shortest time or quickest time to develop ready and, yeah um so the, the product the product that's available that took the longest amount of time was i think that was our mac clay from the development process testing it um, where we started that one at home and then we had to take that one like i said earlier we had to take that to a, a higher scale in production um that one took us the longest it was probably now that was close to a year the development for that one. I don't I don't know exactly how, how long that took, but it took quite a while. And then we reformulated. Then yeah, and then we reformulated. So that was I mean yeah, if you want to take into the reformulation to get into the product perfect. Um, and anybody who wants to know about the reformulation, you don't have an old one. There's really yeah, nowhere that you can buy an old one. What you have yeah. is the reformulated version. Yeah, I get very good an jam, email yeah. about that at least once a week. Regarding the longest products, I mean that was the longest that's available now, but Anti-gravity has taken a long Yes, a lot, of, a lot of viewers, people are asking us all the time, when's anti-gravity coming? When's it coming? And it's just like, the answer we're is working we don't on know. it. You know? Yeah, we're, we're trying. We want it to be as good as possible. We, and, th and that's one of the things that we, we kind of pride ourselves on is we take our time with our launches. And that, that can be a good thing. That can be a bad thing. But, I mean, we, we want to make sure the product's right. So that's over a, time. a year and a half, at least, at least in development at this point. It, it, hopefully we don't hit two years. We really do try to define timelines, but sometimes you just can't work within them. No. We do our best. Um, and the product that actually took the shortest amount of time, believe it or not, was Goon Grease. Um, and the reason reason for that is because we we actually, I had, t so I was at, I had Lion Tamer, right? And then we, we scrapped that, we got rid of that. We, wanted, we, we became Lockhart's. We wanted to be totally authentic, totally true to who we are and, instead of being anything gimmicky. Um, Goon Grease is a little gimmicky though. It's, all, it's fun. Um, but, so I'd made, I'd made the light hold, medium hold, and the heavy hold. I'd reformulated the medium hold, and I'd taken all the characteristics that I had learned from making all of those products, which took quite a while to make those. And it was like one night, I just like had a spark in my head. I was like, why can't I make something that's going to be like super easy to scoop, super easy to apply, high shine with a strong hold? And I, I was like doing math and stuff in my head. And I actually woke up about midnight, and I was like, I'm just going to go start working on this thing. And it, it was probably within a week I had a formula that was in my opinion, perfect. And then I started sending it, I sent it to some buddies and it was, I mean, that product was ready within, Goon Grease was probably ready for launch within a month's time. And Goon Grease has never been Never been refreshed. reformulated, not a single time. Never. It's the product that made us what we are right now. If we would have never released Goon Grease, I don't know if we would be here. Last question of the video. This one's important. 
This is a good question. Be. Prize Fire Products on Reddit. If the only music you could listen to was Creed or Nickelback for the rest of your life, how would you make yourself deaf? <laughs> Blasting Slayer. Slayer. I said it wrong. She's a big fangirl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but blasting Slayer into your ears is not an option. Okay, so I mean that it seems pretty simple. I, I think just about anybody that has to listen to either Nickelback or Creed would eventually go deaf Evolution. naturally. <laughs> yeah. I mean I think I think our ears would just start to degrade from all the terrible music. <laughs> I think that's I mean and if it didn't I would just start jamming as much stuff as in my ears as possible so probably pencils I don't know hot wax hot yeah I could take we could pour pomade directly into our ears I think that's that would work there you go we're gonna we're gonna go with sharp utensils or hot molten wax or hot pencils or hot, hot waxy pencils or it just naturally occurred which is probably the most likely scenario I think that's natural deterioration yeah. of eardrum eardrum natural to <laughs> city earlobe <laughs> <laughs> a natural deterioration. Those would probably go to. I think everything would just start to go. If you listen to Nickelback, your your lobes fall you're off. You're done for. <laughs> Shout right. out to Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, this has been educational, informative, and mentally stimulating. And a whole lot of fun. So I want to thank uh, Stephen Nicole for uh, letting us come up. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. If you haven't yet watched part one, head on over and watch that. Check out how Goon Grease is made. Check out their website, it'll be in the description down below. Other than that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's really important that you do that. And let me know what you guys thought about these videos. If you wanna see more behind the Bruce segments, let me know in the comment section down below. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.